Hello everybody, Tiny Rail Fan Productions here with a quick announcement before we uh, start the video. First of all, I wanted to apologize to all of you for uh, getting this out so late, about uh, 10 months behind schedule. Um, there were a couple of uh, personal incidents over the past year that have affected my ability to, you know, make these long videos and I've been only able to produce those short videos in this time, and this series has basically been put on the back burner. But after the demand for bringing this series back, and seeing as how all three episodes have gotten over 15,000 views, which I thank you for anyway, uh, I thought it was finally time to bring this series back. And as for the future of this series, I plan to release it in, you know, five episode blocks or seasons. I guess you could call this season one of Engines of Long Island. And uh, I plan to do these in like era installments. So we have the turn of the century all the way up to the present day. I'm thinking season two, you know, will be based around engines such as the DD-1, MP-15, C-420s, the early M1s and things like that, but don't count me on it. But after all that said, after 10 months of work, I am now proud to present Engines of Long Island, see episode 4, the MPCU cab cars. I hope you enjoy. And now for our feature presentation. Hello everyone, this is Tiny Rail Fan Productions, and welcome back to a very overdue Engines of Long Island Railroad. Today's episode will cover the LIRR's cowl-bodied, non-powered cab cars. During the early 1970s, American Rail Passenger Service was in considerable trouble. In 1971, 20 railroads from across the country donated all their passenger equipment to the newly formed Amtrak. Now focused on only freight work, many Class 1 railroads were rethinking their motive power fleet. Their primary problem was getting rid of their old cowl units such as EMD F7s and Alco FAs. Newer chop-nosed locomotives such as the SD40-2, for example, had better visibility using a narrow hood and large windows on the front end. These newer units would prove better at switching, too. Meanwhile, the Long Island Railroad had a motive power crisis on their hands, too. They wanted to increase the number of trains they could run and reduce the amount of time needed to turn engines or train sets around. Their solution was to buy the old cowl units from various railroads for a low price, reuse their prime movers for head and power HEP, and use their control stands as cab cars. NPCU stands for Non-Powered Control Unit. The LIRR had 23 various units. There were 19 Alco FAs and 4 EMD F units. Their origins were very diverse. From the Alcos, 600 came from the New York Central, later Penn Central, 601 through 606 from the Louisville and Nashville, 607 through 610 from the Western Maryland, 611 through 616 from the Burlington Northern, and 617 through 618 for the New Haven, later Penn Central. From the EMD F units, F9A, 619, and 620 came from the Milwaukee Road, and 621 and 622 were former B&O F7As. These units were either equipped with Nathan K5LAs or Nathan P5As. Here are a few examples. <laughs> hit amongst rail fans. Long Island would become one of the few remaining places in America where F units could be found hauling revenue trains. Some of them still had their original prime mover if it was deemed usable. The cab cars made running around trains and turntables obsolete. 
With the extra power on hand, the LIRR could add more trains to its schedules without worrying about motive power shortages. These units could usually be found bringing up the markers of a regular 5-7 car train, or found doubleheading with other units on longer trains to provide extra HEP. One more interesting note was the numerous paint schemes these units wore during their careers. There was blue and white stripe, blue and white stripe with red lettering and pinstripes, P72 gray, blue, and yellow nose, gray, blue, and yellow nose and pilot, and super steel blue with yellow nose and stripes are only a few examples. With the advent of new C3 bi-level commuter cars and later DM30 locomotives in the early 2000s, the units were slowly retired and eventually scrapped. Out of the 23 total NPCUs, 10 survive today. 602 is now up and running at the SMS rail lines in Bridgeport, New Jersey, and is being repainted into its original LNN scheme. 603 was moved to the Southern Railroad of New Jersey in Winslow Junction before it was purchased by the Anthracite Railroad Historical Society. 605 is still in Super Steel Blue and sits at the Tennessee Central. 607 was repainted into its original Western Maryland colors and sits abandoned at the Georges Creek Railroad in Maryland. 610 was sold to the Western Maryland Railroad Technical Historical Society in 1995, its future unknown. 613 was moved to the Brooklyn Roundhouse in Portland, Oregon to be repainted into SPNS colors. 615 was recently moved to a museum in Virginia after being used as a SEPTA gel train unit. 616 was moved to the New York and Greenwood Lake Railroad in New Jersey. After the facility closed in 2020, this locomotive now has an uncertain future. 617 now sits at the Nugatuck Railroad in Connecticut, while 619 and 621 were moved to the Seminole Gulf Railroad in Florida. Aside from being given a new lease on life on the Long Island, these various F units captivated rail fans from across the Northeast. They operated in the last decade of the 20th century, paving the way for the modern LIRR we all know today. Despite their somewhat brief service lives, they are still considered an essential part of the engines of the Long Island Railroad. Thanks for watching everyone. Once again, I'm sorry for delaying this for so long. But don't worry, I'll remember to still keep making these. Anyway, if you'd like to see more Engines of Long Island and other videos that I make, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, special thanks to all the following people on screen for letting me use their clips and photos for the making of this video. And stay tuned for the final episode of Season 1, where I will discuss the modern LIRR and the M7 fleet. See you all soon, everybody.